Hi everyone, welcome to a new section of the course. More about search, search trees and hash tables. In this section we will see how binary search and trees are related and how this helps us create some more flexible searchable data structures such as self-balancing binary search tree and red-black tree. We will also look at a different kind of searchable structure called a hash table. Now we move on to the first video of this section that deals with binary search tree. In this video we are going to take a look at insertion, invariant, deletion and complexity of binary search tree. You already know what binary search is. Let's go back to the sorted array from an earlier section and study it again. If you think about binary search, you know you need to start from the middle of the sorted array. Depending on the value to be searched, either we return if the middle element is the search item, or move to the left or right based on whether the search value is greater than or less than the middle value. After this, we continue the same process recursively. This means the landing points in each step are quite fixed. They are the middle values. We can draw all the search paths as in the next figure. In each step, the arrows connect to the midpoints of both the right half and left half, considering the current position. In the bottom part, we disassemble the array and spread out the elements while keeping the sources and targets of the arrows similar. As one can see, this gives us a binary tree. Since each edge in this tree moves from the midpoint of one step to the midpoint of the next step in the binary search, the same search can be performed in the tree by simply following its edges. This tree is quite appropriately called a binary search tree. Each level of this tree represents a step in binary search. Say we want to search for item number 23. We start from the original midpoint, which is the root of the tree. The root has the value 50. 23 is less than 50, so we must check the left hand side. In the case of our tree, follow the left edge. We arrive at the value 17. 23 is greater than 17, so we must follow the right edge and arrive at the value 23. We just found the element we have been searching for. This algorithm can be summarized as, start at the root. If the current element is equal to the search element, we are done. If the search element is less than the current element, we follow the left edge and start again from step two. If the search element is greater than the current element, we follow the right edge and start again from step two. To code this algorithm, we must first create a binary search tree. Create a binary search tree class that extends the binary tree class. Import the required Java libraries. Add the algorithm inside. Now wrap the method so that you don't need to pass the root. This method also checks whether the tree is an empty tree and fails the search if that is the case. Now we will see insertion in a binary search tree. This is our insert value method. Insertion in a binary search tree is done by first searching for the value to be inserted. This either finds the element or ends the search unsuccessfully where the new value is supposed to be if it were in that position. Once we reach this position, we can simply add the element to the tree. In this code, we rewrite the search again because we need access to the parent node once we find the empty spot to insert our element. We can wrap this up into a method that does not need a starting node. It also makes sure that when we insert into an empty tree, we just add a root. Suppose in our earlier tree, we want to insert the value 21. The figure on the screen shows the search path using arrows and how the new value is inserted. Now that we have the means to insert elements in the tree, we can build the tree simply by a successive insertion. Before that, we will implement our main method. The following code creates a random tree with 20 elements and then does an in-order traversal of it. Run the code. You will always find that the elements are sorted. Let's find the invariant of a binary search tree. An invariant is a property that stays the same irrespective of the modifications made in the structure it is related to. An in-order traversal of a binary search tree will always result in the traversal of the element in a sorted order. To understand why this happens, let's consider another invariant of a binary tree. 
All descendants of the left child of a node have a value less than or equal to the value of the node, and all descendants of the right child of a node have a value greater than the value of the node. It is understandable why this is true if you think about how we formed the binary search tree using the binary search algorithm. This is why when we see an element bigger than our search value, we always move to the left child. This is because all the values that are descendants of the right child are bigger than the left child, so there is no point investing time in checking them. We will use this to establish that an in-order traversal of a binary search tree will traverse elements in a sorted order of the values in the nodes. We will use induction to argue for this. Suppose we have a tree with only one node. In this case, any traversal could be easily sorted. Now let's consider a tree with only three elements. An in-order traversal of this tree will first process the left child, then the parent, and finally, the right child. Since the search tree guarantees that the left child has a value that is less than or equal to the parent, and the right child has a value greater than or equal to the value of the parent, the traversal is sorted. Now let's consider our general case. Suppose this invariant we discussed is true for trees with maximum H levels. We will prove that, in such a case, it is also true for trees with maximum H plus 1 levels. We will consider a general search tree. The triangles represent subtrees with maximum N levels. We assume that the invariant holds true for subtrees. Now, an in-order traversal would first traverse the left subtree in sorted order, then the parent, and finally the right subtree in the same order. The sorted order traversal of the subtrees is implied by the assumption that the invariant holds true for these subtrees. This will result in the order traversal of left descendants in sorted order, traversal of parents and traversal of right descendants in sorted order. Since the left descendants are all less than or equal to the parent and right descendants are all greater than or equal to the parent, the order mentioned is actually a sorted order. So a tree of the maximum level H plus 1 can be drawn, as shown in the preceding figure, with each subtree having N levels maximum. If this is the case, and the invariant is true for all trees with level H, it must also be true for trees with level H plus 1. Now we will delete an element from a binary search tree. We are interested in all the modifications of a binary search tree where the resultant tree will remain a valid binary search tree. Other than insertion, we need to be able to carry out deletion as well. That is to say, we need to be able to remove an existing value from the tree. The main concern is to know what to do with the children of the deleted node. We don't want to lose those values from the tree, and we still want to make sure that the tree remains a search tree. There are four different cases we need to consider. Here's a brief description of the cases. The first case is where there is no child. This is the easiest case, we just delete the node. The second case is where there is only a right subtree. In this case, the subtree can take the place of the deleted node. The third case is very similar to the second case, except it is about the left subtree. The fourth case is, of course, when both the children are present for the node to be deleted. In this case, none of the children can take the place of the node that is to be deleted as the other one would also need to be attached somewhere. We resolve this by replacing the node that needs to be deleted by another node that can be a valid parent of both the children. This node is the least node of the right subtree. Why is this the case? It is because if we delete this node from the right subtree, the remaining nodes of the right subtree will be greater than or equal to this node. And this node is also, of course, greater than all the nodes of the left subtree. This makes this node a valid parent. To write the deletion code, we need to first add a few methods to our binary tree class, which is meant for deleting nodes and rewriting node values. Open the class binary tree. Implement the method delete node with subtree. This method simply deletes a node along with all its descendants. It simply forgets about all the descendants. It also has certain checks to confirm the validity of the input. Deletion of a root, as usual, must be handled separately. Now we add another method to the binary tree class for rewriting the value in a node. We don't allow this class to use public methods in the node class to maintain encapsulation. The remaining code is self-explanatory. Finally, we write a method to replace a node's child with another node from the same tree. This is useful for cases 2 and 3. Save this and go back to your binary search tree class. We add a method here to find the least node in the subtree. We walk keeping to the left until there is no more child on the left hand side. Now we can implement our deletion algorithm. 
First, we create a delete node method that deletes a node. We pass the node to be deleted as an argument. Now we will add the attribute direction of the type boolean. Add this code. Here it initializes the direction by performing checks for four cases. Case 1. There are no children. In this case, we can simply delete the node. Case 2. There is only a right child. The right child can take the place of the deleted node. Here we need to change the visibility of the root attribute. Case 3 is when there is only a left child. The left child can take the place of the deleted node. Finally, case 4 where both left child and right child are present. In this case, first we copy the value of the leftmost child in the right subtree, or the successor, to the node that needs to be deleted. Once we do this, we delete the leftmost child in the right subtree. The process of deleting a node turned out to be a little more complicated, but it is not difficult. Further on, we will discuss the complexity of the operations of a binary search tree. But before that, we will call display text method from main method. Here is the code. Run the program. You can see our tree here. Good! The first operation we will consider is the search operation. It starts at the root and moves down one level every time we move from one node to either of its children. The maximum number of edges we have to traverse during the search operation must be equivalent to the maximum height of the tree, that is, the maximum distance between any node and root. If the height of the tree is h, then the complexity of search is O of h. Now, what is the relation between the number of nodes n of a tree and the height h of a tree? It really depends on how the tree is built. Any level would require at least one node in it, so in the worst case scenario, h equals n, and the search complexity is O of n. What is our best case? Or rather, what do we want h to be in relation to n? In other words, what is the minimum h given a particular n? To answer this, we first ask what is the maximum n we can fit in a tree with height h. The root is just a single element. The children of the root make a complete level adding two more nodes for a tree of height. In the next level, we will have two children for any node in this level. So the next level or level 3 has a total of 2 multiplied by 2 equal to 4 nodes. It can be easily seen that the level h of the tree has a total of 2 h minus 1 nodes. The total number of nodes that a tree of height h can have, then, is given with this equation. This is our ideal case where the complexity of the search is O of log n. This kind of tree where all the levels are full is called a balanced binary tree. Our aim is to maintain the balanced nature of the tree even when insertion or deletion is carried out. However, in general, the tree would not remain balanced in the case of an arbitrary order of insertion of elements. Insertion simply requires searching the element. Once this is done, Adding a new node is just a constant time operation. Therefore, it has the same complexity as that of a search. Deletion actually requires a maximum of two searches, in the fourth case, so it also has the same complexity as that of a search. In this video, we learned about the binary search tree in detail.